before we head to Harrington, we've got some business to wrap up. And that happens to be the finals for the Delaware Standard Bread Breeders Fund Lake Closers for three-year-olds that recently took place. First up, let's see who won the over $50,000 DSBF Lake Closer Final for sophomore Philly Trotters. They went by three quarters in one twenty-eight and two-fifths around the final turn coming toward the top stretch going platinum by length now. Platinum proposal back to second, about 10, 12 lanes. Starfish takes over third. They come toward the top of the stretch with going platinum on top, turning for home. It's going platinum by two lanes. Platinum proposal giving chase in second, coming through the stretch. Going platinum pulls away. Going platinum's in front. Then it's going to be platinum proposal, distant third. That's Starfish. Time for the mile was 158 and 2. Going Platinum, owned by Breakaway Racing, trotted from gate to wire in a new lifetime mark of 158 and 2. The daughter of E.L. Platinum, bred by Sean Callahan, is now 3 for 3 this season. Bally's Dover Publicity Director Al Krasuski talked with winning trainer Nick Callahan and his son Corey Callahan, who steered the Philly to victory. Corey, when you look at the program, you saw that uh, your filly had a lot of speed in here uh, and looks like you used it to your advantage. You had three or four horses coming at you. What was your thinking uh, going into the first turn? Um, you know, I mean, my main thing was, uh, unfortunately, when Montreal made a break, I mean, that kind of made things a little bit easier to, um, you know, hopefully get around Kim. Uh, you know, and Moran's horse, Philly, is the, you know, the one to beat, so... You know, when a bunch of them were to the outside, I said, well, this is going to work to my advantage. He's going to have to tr travel, you know, a lot farther to get me. So it worked out great. And once you got to the top, the quarter was 28 flat. You went to, the, I believe, 29 flat, 59 and 2. So you backed off that quarter a little bit. And then here comes Platinum Proposal. You Both of you have been slugging it out all year. You win in 158 and 2. That's a lifetime mark. Uh, any concerns going down the back stretch? You were toe to toe. Yeah, no, um, you know, I was just kind of letting my filly idle along, and, you know, when I seen him out there, I had to, you know, kind of get her in gear to make sure she was ready, but, you know, I felt pretty good halfway through the last turn, you know, that, that she was going to get there. Congratulations, Corey. Thank you. Nick, tell us about going platinum. What did you see in her in the beginning, and how good is she now? Well, we've been lucky. She's always been a – we've had a bunch out of the mare, and uh, most of them haven't been real good gated. They kind of beat herself and stuff. And whether it's the Yale Platinum coming out of dinner, I don't know. But she's been a really good gated. You know, she's been flawless that way. And uh, that helps. She just wears a little light pair of shin boots. And, uh, but she's a little tough. She's a little hard-headed. And she's nervous. But, uh, you know, when she gets out there on the track, she knows her job. And she does it well. Well, Nick, Corey, congratulations. It's a family affair. <laughs> Next, we'll check out the late closer final for three-year-old Delaware bred Colt and Gelding Trotters. Three quarters, 127 around the final turn. Coming over toward the top of the stretch, LG's Jackson, the fourth length lead. Here comes a three wide, works like a charm, trying to get up in the second round. LG's Bluestone, they're at the top of the stretch. LG's Jackson's got the lead, works like a charm. Is coming on the outside, coming through the stretch. LG's Jackson. Coming on the outside, works like a charm. Coming fast, works like a charm to get up. LG's Jackson in a photo with LG's Bluestone for the place, 157 and 3 fifths. Works like a charm, owned by Brett McDonald, got up to win in the final stride with Tim Tietrick in the bike in a career best of 157 and 3. The son of E.L. Platinum, bred by Nicholas Malcolm, came down from Canada and will be competing in DSBF races this season in the first state. We spoke with trainer Jim King Jr. about this standout sophomore. So you got this horse from the Great White North. <laughs> so tell me the story. Brett McDonald is the owner and sent him down to you? Yeah, yeah, he just uh, asked me if I could uh, keep him over. He was stabled here last fall, and I was in Kentucky, cause, so I never really saw them or the horse. Uh, he was only here a couple of weeks, and I was down at the sale and racing at Lexington. So uh, when he got ready to come back this time, he called me and, and wanted to know if, it, uh, if I would just keep him. 
So I said, sure, I can't think of why I wouldn't. And uh, when, when we did, he's uh, not the most handsome fellow in the world, but he, he's a solid trotter and he likes his work real good. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad he sent him, that's for sure. So tell me about the race the other night. Very exciting. Did you think you had it? Well, there was a lot of head-scratching moments in that race. Uh, you know, he took a little peek out of there with him, and it got really crowded out there in the first turn. They had him out wide, and Timmy kind of wrestled him back and settled in. Uh, and watching the race, if you, if you owned him or trained him, you're just thinking, damn, is he ever going to move this horse? <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what he did, tipped him, he just went right on around about his business and looked look like the tote board said he should. All right. Well, I know there's horses banging to eat in the background. Phones are ringing, <laughs> so I will let you get back to work. Okay. That's what we do around here. <laughs> Moving on, let's take a look at more DSBF action in this special late closer series for sophomore Philly Pacers. They go by three quarters, three of them in a a row, 127 and one. They race on the final turn, coming toward the top of the stretch now, and curtsy for Persico up to join the leader. That's Jet propelled into third, Bell's Dream. All done right now, looks like small town bad girl. They're at the top of the stretch, trying to go home. They straighten away, Jet propelled, comes off the turn with the lead. Jet propelled, curtsy for Persico, down the inside, Bell's Dream. They come toward the wire. And here comes Curtsy for Persigo, but holding on, Jet Propelled. Jet Propelled, Curtsy for Persigo, and Bella's Dream, 157. Jet Propelled, owned, bred, and trained by Bob Shahan, is looking very impressive in 2024. The daughter of Roddy's Bags Again wins two in a row, and she crosses the wire first in this late closer final in 157 with Bart Dalius at the controls. Al Krasuski was joined in victory lane by the winning connections. Barton, a lot of movement uh, for this uh, filly, and um, she's finished second to these. Tell us about your trip. Uh, I mean, at first I got the trip I wanted. I was really looking for a two-hole. You know, I've never had her on the front, but I know she's good on the two-hole. And uh, going on the backside, Victor Swartz started to stop real bad, and I was lucky to get out, and, you know, it worked out perfect. Yeah, it worked out perfect. I mean, you came off the rail. Did you have any any curious moments with the curtsy for Prosecco coming at you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely did. That horse was tough the first week, and it's been tough in the series. Well, congratulations, Barton. You get it done in the slop. Thank you. Bobby, congratulations. Thank you. You've been on this circuit, it seems like, forever from Brandywine, Liberty Bell, and into Delaware. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Jet Propel. Um, not a bad little filly. She's starting to figure it out a little bit, I think. Uh, always had quick speed, but she had a little bit of a funny attitude when little you know, a while back, but she's starting to get her, come around and figure it out a little bit. So she's starting to get a little bit matured? Yeah, I think so. Not a bad, going to be a te decent mare, I think. What's your plans in the future? Uh, just the Delaware, just just the Delaware sires and stuff, so all for it. Well, you keep winning this race, you don't need to go outside of Delaware. Oh, no, I want to stay right here. I like it here. Congratulations, Bobby. Thank you. And finally, we'll see the winner of the three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacing Division of the Late Closer with a purse of almost $52,000. They make your way by three quarters in 124 and four-fifths around the final turn coming toward the top of the stretch. Captain Pete is there. Captain Pete beat cop. Down inside, Papa Sun, three wide, better dig two, following three wide as I'm still here. They come toward the top of the stretch, turning home, Captain Pete. Has the lead as they come off the turn. Here's Papa's son now. And Papa's son races up on the outside to get the lead coming through the stretch. Papa's son with Captain Pete. They come toward the wire. Papa's son with a short lead. Papa's son is trying to get there. Down the rail, a late rush from uh, I'm Still Here. Close, 55-3. and three. I'm Still Here, owned by Cindy and Walter Callahan, breaks his maiden with this performance as he comes from off the pace to score by a nose in 155 and 3. The son of Emeritus Maximus was bred by Doris Marine and paid a huge price of over $150 to win. I'm Still Here is conditioned by Walter Callahan and driven by Montreal Teague, and they joined Al after the race for an interview. Montreal, tell us about the journey. Uh, I know 
you probably know more than I do. I was pretty back there pretty far, and I was just seeing Timmy was parked, Allen's on the front. I figured they were mixing it up, so stay along the rail and pray. Well, it did develop to be a, you know, a, a real battle on the front end between the two undefeated Colts. Uh, your guy is, is, is a maiden, but uh, obviously he likes the sloppy track. Yeah, that's a good way to break a maiden, ain't it? <laughs> 51,000. Congratulations, Montreal. Continue success. Water, what did you think of the race? Uh, it was great. Um, I expected to maybe get a check out of it if I got lucky, and I got real lucky and got it all somehow. But uh, they got to battling in the front. But I trained him down as a two-year-old. I thought he was a nice coat, and he just didn't quite pan out. So I brought him back this year and tried to get him ready for this and didn't think I was quite as ready as I could be, but everything worked out at the right time, the right place. Well, you had the great Trotter Muscle Dynasty. Now you got another nice uh, nice coat, and I'm still here. Any plans? Um, I'll probably take him to Harrington and race him a couple of times and then give him off a couple of weeks and then get him back ready for the Delaware Sires there. Congratulations, Water. Enjoy. All right. Thank you. Major post-time high fives to the winners of these spring late closer finals from Dover. And you can look for these young Delaware sired stars at Harrington Raceway this June in rich DSBF competition. And a couple of two-legged harness racing standouts to look for this spring at the Half Mile Oval are the defending training and driving champions from the previous meet. Joe Colombo will be looking to take home the title once again for leading trainer at Harrington Raceway. Last season was the fourth time Colombo had earned top honors. And Alan Davis was last season's leading driver at Harrington with 128 wins. And that was the fourth time in a row that the Smyrna resident had topped the standings at the Kent County Half Mile Harness Track. 